I gave you these two matrices and asked you to multiply them, what would be your first guess? Most people would probably try to multiply the numbers that are in the same spot, two times one, one times five, and so on. And that seems logical, but that's not how matrix multiplication works. Instead, when we multiply A by B, we get this resulting matrix. But where do we get the 2, 16, 3, and 39, and why is the rule designed in this way? By the end of this video, you'll know not only how to multiply any two matrices, you'll also understand the simple, intuitive reason why it actually works this way. Matrix multiplication isn't just about multiplying matrices, it's about combining systems. Think of a matrix as a way of organizing information. The multiplication rule is simply a logical way to take inputs, run them through two matrices at the same time, and get a set of outputs. Instead of getting from the inputs to the outputs in two steps, we can multiply the matrices to combine them into one matrix. So instead of having A and B, we have the product C, which lets us chain together these two steps and combine them into one. Think about it this way. Let's say we own a bakery and we make two products, cakes and cookies. We can organize our ingredient needs in a matrix. So we'll call this matrix A. The rows will be our products, cakes and cookies, and the columns will be our ingredients, flour and sugar. Reading this tells us that a cake needs five cups of flour and one cup of sugar, and that our cookie recipe calls for two cups of flour and three cups of sugar. Now that's simple enough, but we also have two possible ingredient suppliers that we'll call P and Q, and they charge us different rates for our ingredients. So matrix B can show us that supplier P charges us 10 cents per cup of flour and 20 cents per cup of sugar, and that supplier Q charges us 11 cents per cup of flour and 22 cents per cup of sugar. We could also say that our cost of flour is 10 cents per cup from supplier P and 11 cents per cup from supplier Q. Now here's our question, how much does it cost to make a cake if we use supplier P? Well, we can determine that using matrix multiplication. We can multiply these matrices together to determine our costs because what we're doing is chaining together products through ingredients to supplier costs through this matrix multiplication. So if we want the cost of a cake from supplier P, then we multiply our ingredients, five cups of flour, by their cost, 10 cents per cup. But of course, we have to add to that the cost of sugar. So we add and say that we also need one cup of sugar times the cost from supplier P. We can see that we get some of these units to cancel. The sum simplifies to just five times 10 plus one times 20. And what we can say then is that the cost of a cake from supplier P is gonna be 70 cents. What we just did there was calculate what's called a dot product, which is where we take the sum of these two different products and the dot product is what we'll use every time to multiply a row in matrix A by a column in matrix B. So this dot product is our row by column matrix multiplication rule, and we can also use it to find the cost of a cake from supplier Q, where we multiply the cake row by the Q column, the cost of cookies from supplier P, where we multiply the cookie row by the supplier P column, and the cost of cookies from supplier Q, where we multiply the cookie row by column Q. Now let's put these four answers into a new matrix. We'll call this matrix C, and this matrix represents the total cost for each product from each supplier. This is matrix multiplication. We multiplied matrix A by matrix B to get matrix C, and notice how we started from products here in blue, chained through ingredients here in yellow to get to suppliers here in green, and that in the resulting matrix, the ingredients sort of cancel out, they fall away, and we're able to go straight from products directly to suppliers, straight from where we began to where we wanted to end up. Multiplying these two matrices together allowed us to skip this ingredients middleman and see products by suppliers in one combined matrix. Now, our bakery story also tells us the rules for when we can multiply two matrices together. In this example, matrix A is a two rows by two columns matrix, a two by two, B is also a two row by two column or two by two matrix. And importantly, the columns of matrix A represent ingredients, while the rows of matrix B also represent ingredients. For our matrix multiplication logic to work, the number of columns in A had to match the number of rows in B. And this is our big rule, which is that the inner dimensions must match. So if we think about the first matrix as rows by columns and the second matrix as rows by columns, these inner dimensions, the columns of the first matrix and the rows of the second matrix have to be equal. We have to have the same number of columns in the first matrix as rows in the second matrix. We can only multiply these matrices 
if these inner dimensions are the same. And what about the size of our answer? Well, these outer dimensions here are going to become the dimensions of the answer. So the rule we want to remember is inside match, outside remain. Using that, let's determine, can we multiply a 3 by 4 by a 4 by 6? Well, the inside dimensions have to match, and they do, so we can multiply these matrices. And then we know that the dimensions of the product are given by those outside dimensions, so the result is going to be a 3 by 6 matrix. On the other hand, we could never multiply a 3 by 2 by a 3 by 5 because the inner dimensions are 2 and 3, they don't match, and so those two matrices are impossible to multiply. Now that we know when we can multiply matrices, let's practice these mechanics. Let's say we want to multiply these matrices. Our first step is to determine whether we can multiply them at all. So we want to write the dimensions of each matrix as rows by columns. These are both 2 by 2 matrices. The inner dimensions match, and the outer dimensions are going to give the dimensions of the result, so we know the result will be a 2 by 2 matrix. Now to do the multiplication, we'll take the product of the first row and the first column. So we'll get 1 times 5 plus 3 times 6, which gives us 23. And because we're multiplying the first row by the first column, the result goes in the first row and the first column. Then we multiply the first row by the second column, and we get 1 times 0 plus 3 times 1, or 3. And because we multiplied the first row by the second column, the result goes in the first row and the second column. Once we've multiplied the first row of the first matrix by every column in the second matrix, we move on to the second row in the first matrix, multiplying it by each column in the second matrix. So we get negative 2 times 5 plus 4 times 6. And because this is the product of the second row and the first column, the result goes in the second row and the first column. And then finally, we multiply the second row by the second column to get negative 2 times 0 plus 4 times 1, and we put that result in the second row and the second column. And remember, this rule works for any matrices as long as those inner dimensions match. So here we have a 2 by 3 matrix multiplied by a 3 by 1 matrix. Because those inner dimensions match, we know we can multiply them. And the dimensions of the product are given by those outer dimensions, so we know the result is going to be a 2 by 1 matrix, have two rows and one column. That means we'll start by multiplying the first row by the only column, and that'll go in the first row and the only column. And then we'll multiply that second row by the same column. So notice how these rows from the first matrix translate directly into the result, with each row getting multiplied by the same column. When we simplify that arithmetic, we see that the result is in fact a 2 by 1 matrix, which is what we already knew based on our dimensions. Now, here's the critical thing about matrix multiplication that you might have already started wondering about. When we multiply two real numbers, when we're doing simple basic multiplication, like multiplying 3 by 5, we know the result is 15, it doesn't matter the order in which we multiply 3 and 5. We can take 3 by 5 and 15, or we can multiply 5 by 3 and still get 15. That means that basic multiplication is what we call commutative. But that's not true for matrices, and we can prove it using an example we've already looked at. If we multiply these two matrices and we multiply A by B, we know our result is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. We multiply our rows by our columns, and the result that we get is this 23, 3, 14, 4, 2 by 2 matrix. But let's see what happens when we flip the order and try to multiply B by A. Well, we're still going to have valid multiplication because we have a 2 by 2 by a 2 by 2. So our inner dimensions match, our outer dimensions give the dimensions of the product, which is still going to be just a 2 by 2. But we do the math here, multiplying rows in B by columns in A, we get our 2 by 2 result. And when we simplify, we get this 5, 35, 4, 22 matrix. It's still a 2 by 2, but it has entirely different results than the matrix AB. And this is the critical rule. Because these two matrices don't match, we've proven that matrix multiplication is not commutative. Order does matter, unlike in basic multiplication where order doesn't matter. So matrix AB is not necessarily equivalent to matrix BA. Sometimes they can be the same, but that's actually more rare. We can never assume that AB is going to be equal to BA. They will very often be different. And this actually makes sense because let's go back to our bakery chain example. Remember how we chained from products through ingredients and ultimately got to suppliers or supplier cost? 
Well, changing the order of the multiplication, that worked because those inner dimensions, ingredients, those matched, and so we could multiply the matrices. But if that was our real world example and we changed the order of the matrices, what we're saying is that we're going from ingredients to suppliers and then trying to multiply that by products through ingredients. And we can see that those inner dimensions, suppliers and products don't match each other. And so even though we could technically get a matrix with values in it, this would be nonsensical in our real world example. It would change the values we get in the product matrix and we wouldn't end up with the clean result of cost by product per supplier. And even with our non-square matrix examples, if we try to multiply a two by three by a three by two, we're gonna be able to do the matrix multiplication because those inner dimensions match. But if we flip the order, we end up with a three by two by a two by three. The inner dimensions still match, so we're gonna get a result either way, but the resulting product matrices in this first configuration will be a two by two matrix, and in this second configuration will be a three by three matrix. So the resulting matrices have completely different dimensions, which means the results are never gonna be equivalent, even though all we did here was change the order of the matrix multiplication. So if we pull this all together here, let's think again about what matrix multiplication looks like in the real world. We looked at the bakery example, but we can also think about this as a flight itinerary. Let's say I wanna fly from my hometown to New York City. If I have a layover in Chicago, then I can think about matrix B as the first leg of my flight from home to Chicago. That's like applying matrix B to my position. Then if I apply matrix A to my position, it takes me from Chicago to New York. Think about my position or me as X. I'm applying first B to my position to get BX, and then I'm applying A to that result to get to my final destination. Alternatively, I could have taken a direct flight and gone straight from my hometown all the way to New York, bypassing the layover completely. And in that example, I apply B to my position and then A to my position all at one time to get this product matrix C. And whether I apply the single product matrix C or first apply B and then apply A, in either case, I'm starting at my hometown and I'm getting to my final destination of New York. So that product matrix C or AB is the direct flight. It's the one that takes us from start to finish in one single step. The destination is exactly the same, but this shortcut matrix does the calculation all at once instead of in two separate steps. We can also see what this looks like mathematically. So let's say that we start with a vector X and let's say that matrix B transforms that vector from this original vector one zero into this new vector zero one. The new vector we call BX and B essentially performed a rotation where it took the original vector and rotated it counterclockwise by 90 degrees into this new position. Now, if I take matrix A and I apply it to BX, A is going to scale that resulting vector by two times. So A scales up the length of BX by two. I can do those transformations in two steps where I use matrix B to rotate and then matrix A to scale, or I can find the product matrix A, B, which we could call a new matrix C, and matrix C would get me from my original vector X to my final position, this matrix here, zero two, because the product matrix matrix C does both the rotation and the scaling all at one time. So it does the entire rotation and stretch in one move. And this is exactly how video games work. If you want to rotate a 3D model first, and then scale it up, the computer doesn't calculate two steps for every single pixel. What it does instead is multiply the rotation matrix by the scale matrix. It finds that new product matrix or that shortcut matrix one time, and then it can apply that one matrix to the entire model so that the rotation and scale gets done for every pixel all at one time. In other words, matrix multiplication is just the fundamental engine that allows us to collapse complex chains of events into single efficient steps. If this video helped at all, please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you wanna go further with matrices, make sure to check out my pre-calculus and linear algebra courses down below.